in this video we're going to focus on how to create an arbitrary line like this but also match it with a text on it and have a nice background color as well similar to this so we'll learn how to color these how to adjust the text etc etc a lot of items here which will create a new level of interactivity or a le another level of dimension on your chart so let's explore how to do this we will be answering this specific question how to create an arbitrary line with text in chart.js so this was a question that was uh, that came from one of my other videos about how to create a horizontal arbitrary line in chart.js then in here the uh, book here and i'm not sure i'm saying your name correctly ask the following can you do a video of how to add text to that line all right so in this case we're referring to the arbitrary line and so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same here or slightly different so let's start to explore this or how to do this first of all what we're going to do is here i'm going to chartjs 3com on getting started and in here we will grab the default code so just copy this entire code and if you would like to understand this code i highly recommend you to watch this specific video matching with that that will explain exactly what we did all right so once we have this i'm going to cut out this title here just put it for my own personal use put that there save this and then if you refresh we have this here however what i want to do is i want to create a line chart because that's more appropriate with an arbitrary line or more common so we're going to create a line chart and i'm going to make sure that the color is very consistent just one single color here so let's start and do that immediately so here we all have this will be set into the line chart next we just grab a color so i'm going to remove all of these we only have the red color here so this is a single solid color or solid a single color only and oh well we can just copy this that is all right just put it in here and the background color will be has an alpha value of 0 0.2 there we are weekly sales that needs to be corrected one time i guess that's not correct correct english all right we have now everything here the only thing what i would like to do here is tension put it on 0 0.4 save this make sure you have all these commas here to make sure that you don't get any errors refresh and now we have a nice chart here all right so let's start to work on the arbitrary line and i will go fast in this and if you really want to study more deeply please watch this specific video here that i refer to because this video is 30 minutes and goes deep in every aspect of it which is very useful to understand so what we're going to do here now is going to, this will be a snapshot of the or assuming that you have the knowledge of this specific video all right what we're going to do first we're going to create a plugin and to do a plugin we need to activate the plugin here so we're going to put in comma here and then we're going to give this a name so we say plugins we need to activate the plugins and this plugin we put in brackets here we give it a name in this case i will make what we call a success tracker so that will be the plugin name very straightforward so once we have this what I want to do here is to create a new block and this block has a constant and this constant will be the name of success tracker I like to be extremely consistent and I highly recommend you to do that as well so then we have an ID here and this ID will be the success tracker ID so once we have this what we're going to do here now is basically create the following or we want to draw this success tracker because basically here it will read this success tracker and then refer to this and then it will draw something so we want to draw this or basically before drawing the chart we want to make sure that this is here as well why because we want to have overlay or meaning the line that annotation line should be at the back of this main chart line so the chart line is priority and everything at the back it should be so layered at the back and this will be layered on the front it's basically a bit of Photoshop layering. So what we're going to do is the following. We say before draw, this is our uh, function we're going to use, or callback function. Then we say your chart. These are the parameters that we use, the arguments and the options. So it recognizes everything in the chart that we have in here already so far. All right. Then what we want to do here, constant. And this constant will be broken down into specific items here. Going to put in ctx so the question here 
but as well what is ctx i will show you in the console log later on when we log this out you will see exactly what ctx is or does then we have your chart area because what we want to do is we want to break down the chart area variables we want to get these variables make sure you have a uh, column here and these variables are related to if you can see here this is the canvas so if you open up the developer tab you can see the canvas here in full here this is the corner of the canvas however the chart area as you will see is these gray lines here there are basically the the grid line around the chart and this is basically the chart area where we work with so the pixel difference is tiny but it will be noticeable once you start to put in something in the center or when you move stuff so very important here so I will say your top, which is basically the top line, bottom, right line, and left line, and left line. Sorry. So right, bottom, and the left line. And then next, what we want to do is also the scales. We can get these as well. Not always necessary. Yeah, probably in this example, we won't be using this. However, it can be useful. All right. So we have this here. This is referring to the scales. And we can pinpoint maybe the specific position of the scales here quickly. So once we have this, we say this will be equal the chart variable. So this chart has broken down specific objects that we pinpoint. Once we did that, we will say ctx dot save. We need to do this because we will save these variables here. So for the question, what is ctx? Console law dot ctx. If I save this now and refresh, open up the developer tab, you'll see here, when we click on this, let's go at the very bottom, because that's the fully loaded one. And the reason why you're seeing many is because, look, there's an animation. The animation keeps on counting and recounting the positioning and etc. etc. of the chart until at the very end it's fully loaded. And this is the one we need. So you can see here it is related to everything here. We can go in the canvas, you can see all the details here. Let's say you want to have the height the client width, basically the width here, the height, etc, etc, you get these all. You see this height 700, ignore that one. This is the correct uh, height, it's only 300 by 700. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's all kind of options here. All right, so enough about this, because this is basically access to all of these objects. This is the reason why we use CTX. So now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to create what we call the success line. And the success line is our green line here. That will be the dark green line, and eventually upper part will have our light green or transparent C green or alpha value green. All right. And after that, we're going to put in the text. So we have three structures in here. So first of all, CTX dot. Then we're going to make a stroke line because why stroke? because this is a like a brush it's a single line here we don't want to fill it up you have a fill option as well but the fill would mean you fill up also the space within the square so basically this is a square with this the background color is transparent but the borderline is solid that's why stroke stroke think about a canvas in painting same team the painting uh, is blank that's what we call canvas and one stroke with your paintbrush is what we call a stroke or basically when you make a line with your paintbrush, it is a stroke. All right. Say style equal. And then we say here options. Oh, sorry. We, we will just give it a color first. Let's give this a color before we even create something more advanced. Say green. All right. Make sure it's semicolon and not a comma here or else you'll get an error. The next thing what we want to do is we want to make a CTX dot. Let us say here uh, our stroke rectangle so this is the color right now but now we're going to assign the rectangle or basically the borders of that square we're going to give it a dimension for how many pixels in width height etc etc so for that we're going to use all of these positioning here as what i indicated before so we want to start here so for example if we are here we want to have this line here from left to right but starting here, not at the beginning of the canvas, no, at the chart area, this part here. This line is called the left line, and we want to go from left all to the right here. This is why we have these positions here, and I guess we're missing one, I realize. Let's add up here two more, which is the width and the height. And the reason why we're doing this is because these will be essential later on. 
So I'm going to say here, and there are four values in here, zero, x0, zero, uh, y0, zero, x1, and y1. All right. So these here, in short, I'll be very brief, else if you want to know this more deeply, uh, watch this video here, this specific video. Uh, this is basically the starting point on the horizontal level, starting point on vertical level, ending point on horizontal level, and start of uh, ending point on the vertical level. Very straightforward. So we say here our starting point is left, and then our ending point will be the width of it here. So we make basically a line from left to right, and then after we need to get our starting point on the uh, vertical level, which would be, let's say, if we want to grab number 12 here, so we need to have these values here. And for that, we have, I guess, the scales, which is exact, which is quite useful for now. We're going to use that, and we want to pinpoint that. So the moment we hit 12 or more, we can use that specific value. So we want, or we, it becomes a success. So we say here, the y, and we grab, and then we say get pixel for value. And this for value, we will put in here hard-coded line number 12. That will be here. Basically, what we're referring to is the, in, on the y scale, we want to get index number 12. Remember, it starts with 0, and not because the item is 0, but a array always starts with zero. Zero, one, two, three. You can don't see the three here, and we see the. You don't see the odd numbers, only the even numbers. But you still count them. They're still considered as part of the array. So zero, one, two, three, etc., etc., up to twelve. So we're putting here twelve, and then here we want to move it. Well, basically, we want to line from left to right. Horiz horizontal, it's important, but vertically, we don't want to move it. So we just maintain the value of zero so we we don't want to move it any amount of pixels so we save this and then we refresh here there we are we have now one specific line that looks beautiful so now what we want to do here and i guess this must be a semicolon here all right what we want to do here because we want to create another uh, line basically what we, this will be uh, will be a background color here and after you're going to add up the text so we say ctx and then restore, meaning we're going to remove anything that's been saved in here. And the reason we do this is to avoid that we will get anything from this. Meaning, for example, if we would use another background color or the stroke style, it will remember the color of green. And we don't want that because we want maybe a different color in here. So we want to restore this. And then we will say here, let's make here the next one, which would be the success background color all right or background so what we want to do is starting from up all down here a light green color so what we could do here is almost similar we say ctx and then we say here instead of stroke we're going to do a fill style and the fill style is specifically designed for uh, uh, squares but we want to color also the background color so basically the border and the background color will have the same color this here, similar to the structuring of this here, because ChartJS is basically a uh, pre-template of Canvas. So ChartJS is written in Canvas code, so that's why we don't have to learn Canvas. But now, because we're creating our own plugin, we need to learn and understand how Canvas works and how we can write in JavaScript code that the Canvas can read, or in other words, that the Canvas can parse the code that is in JavaScript and parsing means making something readable for a specific language all right so we have here fill style and of theory uh, RGBA and this is uh, we need to have this here then we can say here uh, RGBA then we make this we want to make this a green color and using the double quotation because we already have single quotation here outside so uh, let's make this 200 and then comma we say for blue no colors and then we say your alpha value is 0 0.2 similar to what we have here all right so once we did this next item is the ctx dot fill rect the fill rect here we're going to get the same structuring but except now we have the left and the right and left and the width will be consistent with what we have but the y value so this is the y 
to zero, I will just leave it for now. And I have comma, and I mean y one. These we have to fill up as well. All right, we started with left and right, but what we want to do as well is we want to be here the top and the so we have the top, and then we have to get this specific position here. So we want to only color it till this value here. How do we do this? We say here we get the top, and then what we need to do is get basically here this as the ending value. So what we're going to do here is going to grab this, but then we have to do still some another item as well. Semicolon this, save this. I will show you exactly what's going on here. Oh, all right, we have something wrong here. Maybe we can. Oh, we don't need to do this double quotation here. Sorry, that's not necessary. Let's keep it like that. There we are. All right. So what's going on here? So this is the amount of pixels here, but the pixel positioning is counted from top here or not even from the top from the from the chart area no but the very top here or well, basically the starting point of the canvas because it's a pixel amount here uh, you can see this here equals this here to solve this all we need to do here is minus top right because the top here calculates how much that is and we can even check this i'll just show you first so maybe it makes far more sense to understand that if you console that up top save here open up developer tab you can see 32 pixels this here is 32 pixels before it starts so we do here if you would do minus 32 pixels or minus top in this case which is also 32 pixels you have the repositioning of it all right so basically what we're calculating here is the length again watch this video you will understand it all right so now we have this here Final item here is the text itself. So I'm going to remove this. Let me say here the success text. All right. So the success text is slightly different and has some challenging items here. Once you understand that, it will save you a lot of time. It took me a while to to get the positioning correct, but now you but you will know instantly how to do it. It's quite easy once you know. All right. First of all, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a ctx.font. And the ctx.font is basically the uh, font size in pixels and, of course, the font uh, family style. So we're going to say here, let's say 12 pixels, and then we say Arial. Very simple, nothing special. Later on, we will adjust this. This will be all soft coded later on. So what we're going to do the next one is ctx.font fill style what is fill style now in this case the fill style is referring to this here this is why we're restoring every time or resetting this is basically a reset to avoid that we don't get anything else or else you would have all weird issues so here i'll just get the color green i want to make the color here exactly the same as whatever would be the line here so once we have the font size and the font family we have the color now we have to work on the final item would be basically the uh, what we're going to do here uh, let me double check here is the font text that would make sense the ctx dot and then we say here fill text and this will be um, let me double check because I have my notes here do I have it correctly All right, sorry, I was just checking my notes. This is the text here, but there's two parts of it. Where we have to position it. So we're going to put in the text, let's say here, success tracker line. And then we have a comma here. And the reason why I'm struggling is because I have a lot of formulas already built in here. So then we have the next one here, which will be eventually the place where we're going to position it here. So to do this, we're going to work with a formula as well, but I will just show you here first for now. We're going to do this, but this is not the way we're going to do it because we need to center it. And this centering here is not correct, by the way. So it's just, just giving you a heads up. And once we have this, let's see if this works, just to make sure. If I save this and refresh, all right, I thought so. Oh, of course, what we need to do here is this is let me break it down. 
so that will be uh, more better I'm going to break it down first because I know that I'm struggling as well by not breaking it down so here we have basically two values your text comma the X position and we have the Y position and this is the reason why I'm struggling because I already built the formulas in here so we have this here and what I'm going to do now is we have the success tracker all right we have the width here and let's put in here we can just grab this one for now we're going to put this in here minus top and let's see what will happen so if I have this we do this we can save this here and let's see what's going on all right so we have this here but you can see here what's going on and where it's being positioned it's not that good but it helps us now to see where you have to place it up. So I'm going to do this, and then after I figure out why my formula was like that. Uh, oh, where we are, sorry. That is not the one I need. I need to have this one here. I'm going to remove this. Save that. Refresh. So you can see here, we're now here exactly on the line. I don't want to be on the line. I want to just be on top of the line. So we're going to put in uh, minus 12. The minus 12 means we are going to position it up a little bit more. So if I save this here now, there we are. All right. So we have this now, but you can see it's not in the center. So I'm going to work now on how we can center this nicely. Now there's two options that we need to do. We need to work here with the formula more. There will be more in here. But what we will do first is to position in the center, we will do a text align center. So we say text align then equals center. We save that one and then of course what we need to do is a restore save that there we are all right so we are here but what is happening now is calculating the width but the width or oh, sorry the, the entire canvas if I'm not mistaken what is that uh, sorry it's calculating the width so it's calculating the, the width and here is your issue left and right divide by two you will say this is correct you are right but we have an issue here because we have this part here missing so what we need to do is this divide by two and then plus this part here will position it into the center nicely so this is what we're going to do right now so we have this and then let me double check here it's on the fill text and in the fill text here we're going to say the following fill text with divide by two plus left all right so if i save this now refresh oh, there we are so now we are nicely in the center and we can check this if we just put in a value let's put in a value of 12. save that there we are nicely in the center and even if you would change this into a item well of course this doesn't work it's already had a size but fair enough this is consistently in the center if we move this a bit does it become reactive not really but that's okay fair enough we'll leave that well we can do it in here if you want to put it to check if it's really in the center change the width of the chart box we'll change this still in the center correctly all right so we are here done this is really validated now what i want to do because basically we're done what i want to do is i want to have all of these codes here nicely matched without having a hard-coded item here because we have here a ton of hard-coded stuff let's reduce it into soft coding the code all right so what we're going to do in here we're going to put in here the plugins in the options so we say here in the options we take plugins then here in the plugins we're going to grab the plugin and the plugin name is success tracker this is the reason why i have these here always consistent or else you will have you might have trouble in getting them because sometimes you see them not consistent but they will be too hard don't don't make it hard for yourself it's quite con it's really quite confusing already chart yes because of all the different codes we have so now what we want to do here is the following well first of all let's track on um, this here this here the stroke line we will change this we can give this a name this would be the name of success line color what we say here is we have to refer to the option so this is an object here but we're going to grab only this here and we say here success tracker Success line color equals green. All right, comma. And we can test this. Let's make this pink. If I save this now and change this, you can see here something is adjusted here. If I make this uh, 
Press cyan. Let's see here. You should see here now it's slightly blue. All right. So put it back to green. There we are. What we can do more is we can change the color of the fill text. This should be identical here. You can change it as well or just put it like this. So it's always consistent here. Change this here now. These two are always the same color. Nicely done. Next here we have this. And this is our background color. So what I'm going to change here now is we're going to let's put it here at the back. Let's say success line background or a success line background color and not really the most appropriate name but fair enough save that put it in here success line background color equals this value here comma if you do that there we are and if we make this uh, let's make this 200 as well we probably get a purplish color or something or brownish nice this works validated all right final item is we have this number 12 here and what i want to do here this will be text and i guess here this and this here because the reason i put it up is 12 pixels is because we have a font here of 12 pixels but this and this should be matching with each other so let's make this um, text success font style so how are we going to do this because we have here value so i'm going to show you the template literals i'm going to use it like that with backticks. Backticks is under the keyboard of escape, under the escape button. So I do backtick, backtick, and then we say here dollar sign, and then here we're going to say here um, options dot success um, font size. All right, we're just going to get this one. And once we did that, I'm going to cut out this part only. We can remove all of this. Paste it here. JavaScript will understand exactly that this is a variable while this here is text. So this is a far better concatenation than the standard plus and then this quotation text and then again plus etc etc. So this is an alternative way far better. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to remove the options here because we are already in the options. Let me say here font size will be 12. Or number 12 that's fine like that so if I do this we have this one here we're going to put it as well here remember here we don't need to use backticks because this is only for concatenation with strings now we don't have a string here so then it's not necessary then the final one here is the options text so I'm going to just cut this out put it in here and we'll just say here success font size uh, success text all right so i'll just cut this out we don't need the, this part so we say here this equals whatever we put in here so let's say here this is uh, or target has been hit target has been been hit all right let's make this be all right save that refresh there you are you can see this is nicely in the center and of course you can change the color of the text but this is basically how we're going to do it and now we have this one nicely done we can change it even to abc and this this works nicely and it is always in the center we can move this down as well if you want to what you could do here is instead of minus you do a plus so it will increase the amount of pixels and then it goes down here and that's basically how you can play around with this and if we would change that so let me show you this let's make this 20 you can see it's moves here down and this is the most important thing it is a layered base and because we're doing here before drawing the chart if you want to there's another way and uh, let's see if it works after draw now you can see now we're drawing after after the chart has been drawn then we draw everything else so you can see here now we are over lapping or we are on top of the line chart and here as well on top of this text here although i don't recommend this but you can see here even the transparency here or this greenish color is slightly on top of it which doesn't make it look nice so we can make this before again save that refresh now you can see the line is again nicely pink or reddish etc etc this should be on the uh, top here what i did here go back here save that 
and there we are. So this is basically how you add a text on the line or just between it. And there's another way to do it is maybe to put in the center event and then have some background color here around this. I will cover that in another video as well because this is slightly different on this part. And so if this video was good or you still struggle with this, I highly, highly recommend you to watch this video as I refer to it multiple times. This contains all the basics on it and will basically teach you as well how to use a canvas code better. So highly you uh, check this out. I have a pop-up will show up here with the link as well, so you have that.